Okay, <coughs> so I've probably got the most difficult job here because um, I think what we need to do is actually define the elderly. So if one of these guys came into your department, would you do something <coughs> different to them? Right, they're in their 10th decade of life. Would you actually <coughs> treat them differently? Would you treat any of these guys differently? All right? We've got Chris Colton, who's going to be speaking to us tomorrow. He's in his ninth decade of life. Chris Kerwin, absolutely outstanding trauma surgeon. He's in his seventh. Our eminent ex-president is in his uh, seventh decade. And next president of the BOA and myself, we're in our sixth decade of life. Are you going to do something different to us? So what are the principles of an articular fracture? You want to get that joint moving if you can. You want to get this articular surface stable, and you want to uh, stabilize the metaphyseal or uh, uh, pattern, and it depends on that pattern of fracture, how you're actually going to do it. But this injury epitomizes, like nowhere else, the definition of a fracture. It is a soft tissue injury. It's the soft tissues that you've got to think about. And we are all working in really, really busy units. We have all got really busy clinics. And if you're going to stick them in a frame or in a plaster, you're going to need to be following those patients very, very regularly. If you fix them, and you fix them well, they probably will not need to come back to your clinic quite so often. And as Charlotte quite rightly said, you've got one shot at this. You've got one shot to get it right. Those patients aren't going to be able to non-weight bear or partial weight bear. I just don't believe in that. I think you, you've got to be able to get those patients weight bearing straight away. And you need to maintain their trust. So we've heard about Bob, and I, I, I almost waved the <coughs> flag there, Bob, because um, I, I don't disagree with anything that you said. But can you weight bear them in a plaster? Can you get that joint mobilizing? Are you going to sort out the articular surface? Do you get union in a plaster? Can you look after the soft tissues? And I'm not sure you can do any of those. Now, I've done plenty of these, and I bow to Nick's experience. I've done lots and lots of these. Um, there's no doubt you can get a weight bearing, you can get that joint moving, and you can make it stable. But I, I have a contention about the soft tissues. Uh, Mick has more experience with this than anyone else. It, I think it's extremely unusual in the elderly patient not to get a, a, uh, a pin track infection. And that is a nuisance to them. They come back to your clinic very regularly with that. And as we've got better at plating over the years, and I, I did a fellowship in, in limb reconstruction, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these frames, I find it really, really difficult to sell the frames to the patient. <coughs> Bill's going to talk about this, my ex-medical school rugby playing mate. This is probably a triumph of technology over reason, although I suspect Bill's going to tell us to stick the nail out the other way. Um, but we'll wait and see, and Matt's going to tell us a bit about fixed ET uh, uh, later on, and you'll hear some of the results of that. I'm not sure that nailing a pit on is probably the way to go. We do know how to manage these injuries now. So the papers that have been presented to you have all been dated more than 10 years ago. We know how to span, scan, and plan. We know how to put a, a frame on properly. This is Ian Pallister's quadrilateral frame, and most of us who are doing these regularly will use a frame like that because it's out of the way of your zone of injury. It's out of the way of your zone of surgery. We know how to look at the fracture. We know and understand about the axial zones. These two papers from Mark Jackson, Claire Topless, of the Peter Coles Group in Vancouver, have told us how to look at the CT scans to learn where we're going to put our incisions, how we're going to reduce things. And Tim, from his Vancouver work, um, uh, presented at the OTA, presented at the trauma uh, symposium in Edinburgh, presented at the OTA again, and shown that you can fix these early with the right people in the right place at the right time. And if you do it early, you will get outcomes almost as good as waiting. And that, in the elderly, may be a much better thing than sticking on a bricking X fix. We know how to use plates. <coughs> Most of you have got the locking plate on the medial side, but actually that is not a panacea. You need to know where the plates go. And that very first film will tell you where that plate goes. That needs a lateral plate. Plates push, they don't pull. So put the plates where they're meant to be, make it what I call AFT. You want it and a flipping tonic. Right? And the great advantage of the plate, you can't see the bloody fracture. <laughs> and yeah, I let them wait back. I get the patients up and walking on it. They may not heal perfectly, but they heal. Right? They get up and they get going on it. So the plate, 
the principles of the plate and the advantage of the plate, you can get that joint moving early. You can make the joint absolutely stable and you can do that to the articular surface and you treat the, the metaphyseal, diaphyseal bit properly. If you manage it properly, you will manage the soft tissues properly. You've got to, you have got to be careful about that, but I do let the patients wait there. I don't believe in non-weight bearing almost anyone. I can only think of two injuries where I'm non a non-weight bearing patients, and that's an oscalcis and a lisfranc. And if you get it right, they're going to come back to your clinic less often. And then they're busy clinics, that's important. <coughs>